It is the privilege of a Prime Minister to live here, their job to lead here and their duty never to lie here. Today, some light would finally be shed on the truth, even if it wasn't fully illuminating. At dawn, Boris Johnson began his day at Tilbury Docks. OK, got it. A delayed report has given him time for political manoeuvres, but at 20 past 11, it finally landed in his email. A quick change back home. Will you take responsibility, Prime Minister? It was time to face MPs over its findings. The Prime Minister and the report into parties closely guarded by police. Their own investigations stripping out much of its contents, but not its conclusions. I now come to the statement, Prime Minister. Which contradict much of what he's previously said here. Firstly, I want to say sorry. And I'm sorry for the things we simply didn't get right, and also sorry for the way that this matter has been handled. And it's no use saying that this or that was within the rules, and it's no use saying that people were working hard. This pandemic was hard for everyone. Mr Speaker, I get it and I will fix it. It is an almighty mess. In total, the report by Sue Gray looked into 16 gatherings during the pandemic, including three revealed by ITV News. A garden party on the 20th of May 2020, which over 100 staff were invited to. The Prime Minister's birthday party on the 19th of June that year and a Christmas party on the 18th of December, alluded to by advisers in a video leaked to us last year, which sparked the inquiry. The report concludes in civil servant speak that the behaviour was difficult to justify with failures of leadership and judgement, too little thought given to what was happening across the country, and adds that the excessive consumption of alcohol was not appropriate in a professional workplace. By routinely breaking the rules he set, the Prime Minister took us all for fools. He held people sacrificing contempt. He showed himself unfit for office. They think the Prime Minister should do the decent thing and resign. Of course he won't, because he is a man without shame. For others, the anger was explosive. But know that this Prime Minister has lied and misled the House. The SNP's leader thrown out of the Commons for his outburst. I ordered the Honourable Member to withdraw immediately from the House. But it was the quiet calm of Conservatives which proved most cutting. One past Prime Minister must surely have enjoyed this. So either my right honourable friend had not read the rules, or didn't understand what they meant, and others around him, or they didn't think the rules applied to number 10. Which was it? Yes. Uh, no, Mr Speaker, that is not what the uh, Grey report says. But there were more who'd read it differently. When he kindly invited me to see him ten days ago, I told him that I thought he should think very carefully about what was now in the best interests of our country and of the Conservative Party. And I have to tell him he no longer enjoys my support. The one I recall attending was my grandmother's funeral. I didn't hug my siblings, I didn't hug my parents. I gave a eulogy. And then, afterwards, I didn't even go to her house for a cup of tea. I drove back three hours from Kent to Staffordshire. Does the Prime Minister think I'm a fool? No, Mr Speaker. Twelve of the parties are no longer just a political but a police matter. The Met's even investigating an alleged gathering in the Prime Minister's own flat on the night Dominic Cummings left number 10. We had a, a bundle of material provided to us just Friday, um, which is well over 500 of, uh, pieces of paper, about a ream and a half, uh, we received, and uh, over 300 photographs. She was the matriarch of our family. Tina Andrew had three children, ten grandchildren and nine great-grandchildren. <laughs> but these are the images they took on one of the days Downing Street partied. Fewer than half of her family could attend her funeral. He needs to go. You were having the knees up while I was burying my mum. You broke the rules. The rest of us stuck by the rules and we grieved. We grieved in silence. That's unforgivable. It is not the forgiveness of the public, but his party that the Prime Minister now needs tonight.
Paul Brand, News at 10, Westminster.